All right, now that we've made the connection between directional derivatives and gradients, we're going to go back to this idea of direction of greatest increase or decrease. And so direction of greatest increase or steepest descent was an idea we talked about when we were um, discussing gradients earlier. And it sort of tells us the, um, the direction where you get the biggest positive value of the derivative. That's just kind of what it means to be the greatest increase. Um, you could think about this as we're thinking about derivatives that depend on direction, but maybe to have it in terms of something that's more familiar to you, you could think about a derivative of something that uh, proceeds in time. Then there's a time when the derivative is higher and a time when the derivative is lower. Imagine like the motion of some kind of projectile or physical thing, roller coaster, whatever you like. There's a time when your speed is really fast and a time when your speed is really slow. Um, and so that opposite direction of greatest decrease or steepest descent is going to be direction where you get the biggest negative Oh, wait, I actually do need biggest there. Biggest negative value of derivative. Um, because we don't just want to be like thinking about shallow versus steep. Greatest increase means very steep up. Greatest decrease means very steep down. But how are those two things going to be connected to d sub u f and grad f? So for unit vector u and some f that gives us grad f, we know from our formula that we can calculate d sub u f is equal to grad f dot u. But we also know from the start of class that grad f dot u doesn't have to be calculated the way where we multiply all the components together. It's also the magnitude of f times the magnitude of u times cosine of the theta um, angle between them. So at any point, grad f is going to be just some constant number, or magnitude grad f is going to be some constant number. Um, here's the gradient. I could calculate that magnitude. No matter what the direction is, that number is going to stay the same. And if I've done my job and u is a unit vector, then the magnitude of u is equal to 1. So the directional derivative is going to be the magnitude of grad f times cosine theta.
and the direction u that we picked is going to determine that theta. And remember, we learned two things about the dot product or this cosine theta thing. So if this is the direction grad f goes in, and this is the direction u goes in, their perpendicular cosine theta is zero. If this is the direction grad f goes in, and this is the direction grad f goes in, that's going to give us cosine theta equals minus 1. And if grad f and u both go in the same direction, then cosine theta is 1. Um, that's just a thing you should know about cosines. The 0 gives you 1, 90 gives you 0. Um, also, just we should remember parallel things have dot product equal to the two magnitudes. Um, perpendicular things have dot product equal zero. So to get that greatest increase, to make this number as big and positive as possible, we want cosine theta equals one. or u in the direction of grad f. And that's just going to give us that the directional derivative is the magnitude of grad f. This is the exact same thing as we said way back when we talked about gradients, just not justified when it was given to you the first time that the gradient points in the direction where f increases the the quickest, um, steepest descent, biggest positive derivative, and its magnitude tells you how much that change is. So the value of the directional derivative when you go in the direction of the gradient is as high as it ever will be, and it's just the magnitude of the gradient. And greatest decrease is just the opposite direction. Cosine theta equals minus 1. So instead of going with f, you run absolutely opposite f. Um, and that's just going to give you d sub u f equal to the negative of the gradient. So kind of think back to that picture in the example we just did. Instead of going um, in the direction of the gradient or kind of like the direction of the gradient, you can imagine you run backwards down the surface, and that would give you a very large value, but a very large negative one. And so hopefully that um, geometric definition of the gradient makes more sense now that you can kind of like calculate it from the directional derivative.